All right. So looking at the daily time frame, as always, we um, see that we did get our bearish sell off that we was looking for in the beginning of the week, um, right down to the structure that I identified um, in the beginning of the week um, and Wednesday as well. Um, so we see um, we had heavy news this week. So that's why we see all of this um, movement here in this week to the upside and this week down news days, yesterday news day as well, um, that gave us that push down. I think I may have, may have said Wednesday that um, it is probably going to be news that's the driving force to pushing us down to retest this um, market structure. And lo and behold, it was news that pushed us down to retest that market structure. So um, we closed the week back up retesting the weekly highs um so well not the weekly high because this was the weekly high but but that was news so that was manipulated so um technically we'll just say push back up to retest market structure um but we did get our downward move that we was looking for so that was good um yeah so with that being said, looking at our currency pairs. All right, um, looking at our currency pairs, we see that um, of course, currencies um, pushed in the opposite direction of the dollar. Um, so we see that we did, um, I'm sorry, give me a second. Let me, let me see something. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, With the news coming out this week, yeah. Um, all right, let me get back on track. So we're um, Euro USD, looking back at Wednesday, uh, we see that we did push down off the market structure. I told you guys that if we did not break back above this um, yellow market structure that I wanted to see us come down and fill in, um, attempt to fill in this imbalance. I told you guys that um, this would be our first market structure that we would um, retest if we did not break the market structure to the upside. So we did come back down and get that retest. And then, you know, we had news. So with fundamentals, technicals kind of uh, went out the window because we see all of this movement here with news come out. Um, when news came out and we see that the euro ended the week kind of correlating with the dollar. So I'm expecting to see some big moves um, out of currencies next week when they um, balance themselves back out. Um, looking at GBP USD, we pushed up off the structure, broke up above structure retested and pushed up with news. Um, and then we ended the day at this market structure that we previously broke on this up move. So that's where we close the market. We'll see how price action reacts to that market structure when, when we open back up. Um, same thing with um, 
NZD, USD. Um, we kind of just all over the place with NZD, USD. Um, this week, um, news, of course, just push through fundamentals. So y'all know how that goes. Ain't nothing you can do about that. Um, looking at metals, <laughs> we did get silver to push back down and retest my structure that I identified Wednesday night. Um, good money. We'll see how price reacts when um uh, markets open back up for silver. Um, same thing um with um go we push down to retest um, market structure that I identified here um, at 16, 1640, 16, yes, 1640. So um, we'll see how price action reacts to that when we um, open up for the new trading week. Um, and oil did get up to retest our um, market structure this week. And and sold off of it. Um, I I want to see if we come back down to retest this market structure right here. Um, and see if we get a wick to come down and fill in this. And then if we get a wick to close, come down or price to come down and fill that in, and then we close above this market structure, then that'll be um, confirmation that we're going to continue to swing up to the upside. Um, looking at U30, um, we did get the sell off back down to the um, market structure that I identified Wednesday night. Um, and we respected that market structure at the bottom and we popped straight back up to retest market structure that I told you I wanted to see U30 retest at um, 30,400. So we closed the week right here um, at this market structure here. So we'll see how price action reacts to that market structure for the new trading week. Last but not least, looking at crypto, we see um, Bitcoin push through my 1832 level, 18, um, I'm sorry, my 18,832 level and my 18,761 level. Uh, push down real good off of that, but we did pop back up. Um, and we did get back above this market structure, what I wanted to see. Um, and then we got up to 1980, retested 1980 and couldn't um, hold above 1980. So we sold back down to retest this previous market structure here that we broke on the way up. So um, crypto markets are still open. So they're open during the weekend as well. We know that. So we'll see. Um, well, yeah, Bitcoin uh, um, should be pushing back up to retest this more. Um, yeah, retest this market structure. Yeah, right here. Um, because this up candle here already retested this market structure. That's what had it to push down. So if we hold in this structure, we should be pushing back up to retest this market structure. And you have to see how price action reacts to that market structure, whether we're gonna keep going up or whether we're gonna respect that market structure and push back down and keep going down. So um, looking at eight, Price came down and retested the market structure. I told you guys about Wednesday. Um, price at around 440, 430, I think it was. Yeah. On uh, the bottom of that, I told you guys that um, worst case scenario, I had a coming down to like four dollars and ten cent. Um, and eight came down to four dollars and seventeen cent. So I mean, hey man. It is what it is. We pop back up to the market structure that I said I wanted to see it pop back up if we respected that four dollars and ten cent level. Um, so that was an easy position to accumulate some more eight for anybody who for anybody who is playing with um ApeCoin. So with that being said, that will bring my 
weekly wrap up for technicals to close. Um, at this time, I'll turn it over to Carmen so she can give us the fundamental wrap up. It is all yours, Carmen. Cool. Um, hey, everybody. So I am, I normally say that I'm going to keep things short and brief. Um, this time I am going to keep things short and brief because, um, long story short, I honestly feel like um, the government thinks the U.S. population is stupid. Um, people have no common sense. They're not able to think for themselves and that, you know, people are just going to continue to listen to whatever they say and just go at their whim. But that time is going to be changing fairly soon. Um, all because of some stuff I'm going to show you. I'm going to go through the Forex Factory calendar for this week really quick um, because we had talked about some of the things that were on the calendar for this week, but we haven't actually just talked about them. Um, so the biggest items that came out this week, um, ISM manufacturing which were off. Uh, we had quite a few speeches, not just from the US this week, um, but from other world leaders as well. Um, we had Jolts Jobs. I'm sorry, hold on. I'm on the wrong week. <laughs> I'm sorry. Last week we had Jolts Jobs, we had NFP. And so that led into this week, which we still had a lot of Fed speeches. Um, but the biggest thing, sorry, like, um, okay, so here we go. The biggest thing that we had come out this week, so we do have G20, um, and those meetings are still going on. Um, they do have some emergency adjunct meetings that are going on that weren't originally on the schedule for G20, just to try to get um, emergency clauses added for um, a couple of European countries, also a couple of things to help address the European energy crisis. Um, FOMC minutes, also another important thing. I actually have those minutes pulled up. We'll go over those in a second. We had CPI, so um, this was no surprise. I mean, if you've shopped in the last year, you know these numbers to be true. Um, inflation is up. Inflation is actually a little bit higher than what they expected it to be um, compared to forecast. So um, those are things that the Fed is going to be taking into consideration going forward as we continue to look towards how they plan to deal with the next interest rate increase. Um, and then today, retail sales um, consumer sentiment and inflation expectations. So if you look at inflation expectations based on the University of Michigan numbers, 5.1%. Um, currently, we're like hovering at like the top of the 3% range um, with hopes to get to the 4% range. However, Jerome Powell did tell us that the Fed was going to have to be a little bit more aggressive in um, trying to get inflation under control. And we actually had Fed members um, that spoke to the same thing. So I have a few articles pulled up from the Fed. Okay, here we go. So these are the Fed minutes. Um, like I tell you guys, if you go through the first page, see who was there. So this is the minute, these are the minutes from the September meeting. Um, you can see who was present. Um, it will tell you who was absent. And if there was a voting member that was absent, who was voting in their place? Typically that does not happen a lot. However, it does happen and you will find those notes somewhere on the first or second page, just depending on how many people actually attend and um, how long the roster is. So for this one, it takes up two full pages and then just a slight bit on the third. So, 
Um, development of financial markets and open market operations. So literally this is the same thing that we get from the Fed every time. Um, but what this is telling us right now is kind of like what's going on in the marketplace, um, how the Fed has been going about um, carrying out overnight operations, helping with liquidity, so on and so forth. So um, then there was also discussion about the economic situation. So this is where we actually go into jobs, inflation, um, the supply chain is talked about a little bit in this section. As time goes on, we literally should be seeing less and less of COVID mentioned in these meetings. However, that's always gonna be the fallback, the scapegoat um, event because the Fed will always tell us that, hey, um, that's kind of like the reason for why we are doing all of this. Um, but that does not have to be the case. And in a lot of ways, it isn't the case. A lot of this is the Fed trying to fix mistakes that they made years ago, um, like eight years ago. And they're just now trying to really put a Band-Aid on the situation. Um, and then they're going to make the American people out to be the blame. And I'll show you how and why in a second. Um, so the biggest thing out of all of this um, that I want to take away and that you should want to take away is um, voting action for um, the next meeting. So in a way, obviously, yes, you care about what the voting action would be. You want to know like which way they were leaning. But the biggest thing for me in all of this, I want to see if they all agree or not. So here, um, voting for this action, everybody's there. There's no one that voted against. So that lets me know that the Fed is on the same page. Um, that's the biggest key I want to take away from reading this is, okay, is the Fed on the same page or not? Because if, if the Fed is fractured in their decision-making, then we have to take a step back and say, okay, well, um, maybe this next interest rate decision is going to come down to the wire. It's going to require more news. It's going to require trying to persuade either the whole group or like the majority to come to the minority side, the minority to come to the majority side or for everybody just to kind of meet somewhere in the middle. But they're all on the same page. So, um, We'll take that for what it is. They all agree. All right. So um, next meeting is November 1st. Um, and so anyway, we'll be looking forward to all of that. These minutes are important. We kind of talked about all this already. We know what the Fed year end goal is. It's like 4.25 to 5, 4.5 um percent on inflation so i mean we know we're getting increases we just don't know if it's going to be split up or if they're just going to do it all at one time so um you can read through the minutes and just kind of see which economic indicators they pulled from they do go through and pull out individual demographics and talk about jobs versus minorities they pick apart the minorities, they go through, and I mean, they do all this kind of stuff because it tries to make it seem like they care about minority diversity, blah, blah, blah. But honestly, it takes up three lines in one paragraph out of 12 pages, whatever. They don't care. It's just, it looks good um, to be in the report. All right, so the main thing that we should actually be caring about that's coming from the Fed that actually has some meaning and something that's actually sub. Um, of substance to us is all this stuff about CBDCs and the banking system. So they currently have a new paper out about CBDCs. Um, so you can find that here. Um, also, there was a speech um, today that came. And so I want you to pay attention 
to where this speech came from and where it was held. So this is a speech at the Digital Currencies and National Security Trade-Offs. So it's a symposium presented by Harvard. So if you know anything about the CBDC research and testing that has currently been done in the United States since the beginning of COVID, you know that Harvard and MIT is facilitating the simulator. So if you go back through and you read the CARES Act, that really long COVID act that everybody was so glad that they got money out of, well, there was more to it than that. In that, the government stated that um, in addition to giving out all of this money to U.S. citizens, that the treasury and the U.S. banking system was responsible for creating a digital wallet for every citizen in the United States. So they did that already. <laughs> and Harvard and MIT are currently testing the CBDC system. So anytime you hear them say, we're not confident in the system, we're not sure how it's going to work, they're going off of research that's currently happening and securities testing that's currently happening in these institutions. So another thing they did that they're not really telling people is that these people that they just so happen to have arrested for cryptocurrency violations, um, they actually have some of these people working on these committees. They're not working as US officials, they're working as contractors through a private university. So it doesn't have to be made public because it's a private university and private universities don't have to discuss their financials or their business. So anyway, um, it's kind of nice to have hackers um, try to reverse hack a system that you're trying to um, make a strong system for your banking system within the country. Um, anyway, so you can go through and read this. It actually is relatively informative. If you don't know anything about the U.S. dollar, how the dollar got to be the... Uh, half value piece of paper that it is today, um, definitely read this because it definitely tells you about how the dollar came to be what it is. It talks about the Bretton Woods system. It talks about CBDCs and the dollar, global threats. It talks about the CBDC in the US versus foreign. It talks about the US dollar versus foreign CBDCs. So um, it literally goes through all of this and it actually, um, down here at the bottom, if you want more information about the banking system, about CBDCs, and you want to know what resources the Fed actually uses when they talk about things and write speeches, well, they're right here at the bottom. Um, there's like 16 of them. So you can go through and click on these PDFs and read them. If you really want to know where the Fed gets their information from, you can actually go through and read the NSA paper on cryptocurrencies that came out in 1995. And that will definitely give you all the sauce that you need for knowing why the government um, knows more about cryptocurrencies than they say. All right, so moving on. So um, the Federal Reserve invites public in on advance notice of proposed rulemaking to enhance regulators' ability to resolve large banks in an orderly way should they fail. This sounds very familiar. Um, if anybody on here pays attention to banking regulation and law and the Fed and the Treasury um, and some of the stuff that they put back in 2004, Four, 2005, um, Alan Greenspan and some of the other members that were like either consultants or actually a part of the Fed, the Treasury, they thought it would be cool to do a public inquiry, I'm doing air quotes, public inquiry, into how they felt that certain things should be done in the banking system. So when you would go into your bank, they had like this little survey thing. And they were like, oh, hey, you want to do this? Could you do this quick survey? So they had banks giving their customers these surveys to fill out, to get their opinion on the banking system to make the customer feel important. Now, 
they want public comment on how regulators should resolve large banks in an orderly way should they fail. It's not a should they fail, it's a when they fail, honestly. Um, so if you wanna participate, there you go. Um, all of this information here. Um, so there's another link somewhere on the Fed's website where it actually goes into more detail about how, um, and it's like literally people, um, like they actually want people to comment. Um, anyway, whatever. It's very interesting um, because people know very little about the banking system. And then what will happen based on what I was saying to you guys earlier is that they will essentially use this information and turn it around and say, well, we did what the people wanted. We thought this was what the people wanted based on our inquiry of public opinion. Um, Jerome Powell isn't above bringing in public opinion um, to excuse actions of the Fed. So it doesn't surprise me that they're doing this because yes, there have been a lot of mergers and a lot of um, backlash within the financial system since COVID has happened. Um, so if you don't know, there have been a lot of hedge fund presidents, leaders, founders, CEOs, CFOs that have stepped down, left their post. Um, the banking system has had a lot of that happen as well. There's been a lot of consolidation. There's been a lot of um, funds that were heavily based in crypto that have now been bought out by JP Morgan and some of these other larger financial firms. So when they talk about the banking system growing and the banking system having a lot of mergers, they're not lying. And if you look at how many have happened in this year alone, it's kind of scary. Um, we didn't even have this many mergers happening after the financial crisis. Um, all right. So another thing the Fed put out in the last two days, um, agency announced dollar thresholds in Regulation Z and Regulation M for exempt consumer credit and lease transactions. So um, I brought this up, I pulled this up because I think there was a, a book or a link or something I saw in one of the groups earlier today <coughs> that I'm in. So this talks about consumer um, credit. It also talks about leasing transactions. It also goes through a lot of the regulations that they have within the banking system and how all these things are gonna be looked at, new thresholds, um, small businesses that are taking out loans and stuff. Um, they've set new thresholds for those as well. I just didn't pull up all the articles, um, but if you come here to the Fed's website and you go to news and events and don't do what I just did, um, press releases. <laughs> Click on press releases and you can scroll down. And just, just since they released the Fed minutes alone, if you, inc if you include the Fed minutes, they released five articles and policy um, speeches. Um, that's a lot. Um, considering that we're in October, they really don't typically do a lot um, of this type of um, of these type of speeches and these types of releases. Um, so for your weekend homework, if you just want homework, I mean, you don't have to, but just go through and read these. I mean, it's very interesting. If you don't click on the PDF, like the summary that comes up, it will take you like maybe three to five minutes, if that, to read it. Um, but a lot of these are interesting. Um, the guidance and what's coming forward from the Fed. A lot of this doesn't surprise me because when you start bringing up the word recession, downturn, depression, deleveraging, everybody gets scared. Everyone wants to start figuring out what can we do now ahead of time. We still have an administration that just won't admit flat out that we're in a recession, but says we could be in a recession soon. Well, if they're saying we could be in a recession soon, we're already in one. Um, we know that we're already in a recession based on definitions of recessions and how economists actually see a recession and not a president who didn't go to school for economy, but whatever, that's none of my business. Um, 
But anyway, so um, when you listen to people who actually care about the financial system, you know, and you start to realize that we're in trouble. And if our Fed is talking about um, should they fail, talking about large banks, well, you really know we're in trouble. Um, and you start looking at how now these banks are so interconnected with one another. Um, laws and regulations that came out of the last financial crisis made it so that these institutions could merge and become large, even more, quote unquote, too big to fail. They say they're too big to fail because if it were to fail, it would bring down so much of the global economy. However, when you start to look at all of the dominoes that have been built up around one institution, all it literally takes is now a mid-sized institution to cause a domino of effect that um, globally is gonna be hard to come back from. So if what a lot of people say is true, um, then you have no choice to then like, but to then like actually come out with your central bank digital currency and actually enforce it and make that the new backbone for your economy. And also if you guys follow congress.gov, you know that there are actual like lawmakers who are now pushing for the United States to go back on the gold standard. Read it, look at all the, the, um, the lawmakers that are actually like on board with this. Um, it's an overwhelming number for it to be the type of policy that it is, but um, they see the writing on the wall and it's a lot that's going on right now. We're in October, we're like halfway through. Um, so I'm just interested to see how the month is gonna finish out. And I'm interested to see what's gonna happen in the next or at the next Fed meeting um, in a couple of weeks. Next week, um, we have like mid-range US news um, we'll just talk about it on Monday, but definitely like go through, you can watch YouTube videos on some of these articles. Cause there's a few people who actually do really good detailed videos. Um, if you just want to know like more detail in layman's terms, um, also read it for yourself just to know what the fed put out there, um, for the people to read and see, um, just so you have the information direct from the source. And that's all I have. Ooh, beans. We appreciate you corn bringing us that sauce tonight. We needed that. Um, definitely about to jump into um, those notes. So thanks for sharing. Thanks for dropping it for us. We appreciate you. Everything you bring to the table. Does anybody have any questions about the weekly wrap up? 